What we have here is a Duramax XP10,000E generator. Uh, this generator has a capacity of 10,000 watts surge, uh, 8,000 watts continuous. And the reason why we purchased this generator is because the electricity around here is like a third world country. I mean, if you get tired of replacing food in your refrigerator and freezer, uh, if you're tired of getting gouged at hotels for extended power outages, uh, you definitely need to get a generator, and that's why we got one. This one right here is pretty powerful. It's enough to run an air conditioner during the summer if need be. Uh, ultimately, you would want to have that wired into the house. I don't have that done yet, but that's definitely on the to-do list. So what I wanted to do is go over some of the features on this and we'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit so we can look at the control panel right here. And what we're going to be looking at is in the upper left part of your screen uh, you're going to see where the keys are located at. Right next to that you've got AC circuit protection right there. Uh, this way if there's any kind of problems that'll go ahead and kick in. If you see the red button right next to that, that's actually an idle control. Uh, if that's on, if you're not drawing power from the unit, it'll idle down. Uh, if the generator is drawing a lot of current out of there, obviously the generator will power up, hit higher RPMs to go ahead and accommodate that. Right next to that is the circuit breaker, on, off, uh, pretty basic right there. Uh, when you start the unit, you want to make sure that it's off. You don't want to have it under load during startup. Right next to that, you've got a voltmeter. This way you can kind of gauge how much draw is coming out of the generator itself. Underneath that, you'll see that you've got a variety of prongs. Uh, probably most common you're going to see are the two 120-volt, uh, 20-amp outlets right there. Um, that's right next to the, the large prong right there. But anyway, to the left of that, you're going to see a 120 volt 30 amp twist lock. And then right to the right of the two common household outlets, what you're going to see right there is the big boy. And that right there is a 50 amp 120 volt 240 volt outlet right there that you can use. What I've got for this generator though, using for my home, is the 120 240 30 amp twist lock outlet and that's all the way to the right. Now we'll go ahead and adjust this here just a little bit so we can see. Let me get down a little bit lower right there. You're going to see those wires uh, two sticking out right there. Now you'll see a lot of reviews on this unit and they'll complain uh, that access to the battery, because it is a manual electric start, access to the battery is limited. Uh, you have to accommodate this if you want to. What I did is I went ahead and you know just wired in a couple uh, wires there with eyelets on each side. It's fixed to the battery. Those out those wires right there, I can go ahead and clip on a charger uh, if I so choose. But this thing starts relatively easy uh, with a pull start so I really don't care about the electric start on it. Uh, but if you do want to uh, maintain that electric start, uh, right above those wires you'll see uh, a black and red uh, twist lock knobs. And that's uh, a DC charge right there. That's a 10 amp uh, DC charge. And we'll go ahead and take a look at the handles here. Let me zoom out here. You can see the handles right to the right of the unit. Uh, those fold up and fold down for easy storage. Uh, we go over to the right over here and then we're going to see uh, a tire. It's a solid tire, it never goes flat. You don't have to worry about putting air in it. Uh, but if you don't rotate the, the tire very often, you're going to find it does develop a flat spot. Not a big deal really right there. This unit weighs upwards of 300 pounds. You're definitely not going to be able to cart this around with you if you want to take it to the campground or anything to that effect. This is more or less a house unit right here. 
and I think you'll find that uh, it's more than accommodating for a household. So what I'm going to do now is we're going, going to uh, detach this from the tripod and I'm going to go ahead and give you a walk around on this unit. Hold on a second. Okay, we're back online right here. I want to point out over here, you're going to see the oil. That's the oil fill right there. And we're going to come up here to the top. And let me go ahead and zoom in on this. You're going to see that this has a fuel gauge right here. Okay, I know you'll see a lot of people say that this does not have a fuel gauge with it, but it does. Look at the warning labels right there. Use outdoors. EPA certified. For those of you in California especially. Okay, down here on this part, uh, what you're going to see here is your air filter. Right above that is going to be your choke. Okay. Right over here to the right, you're going to see your fuel valve. Up above it, it gives you instructions. You'll see instructions here for the choke as well. And the muffler. Right there's the outlet right here. I know some people, what they'll do is they'll attach something to this and actually vent it out so they can run it indoors. <laughs> That's something you really want to do. If, if there's a problem, carbon, carbon monoxide poisoning is definitely a killer. We'll take a look at the handles right here, up and down. Pretty simple. Over here to the right is the muffler. And then over here Crankcase, my wire job right here. You'll see it goes through. Does pretty good right there. And we'll go ahead and take a look at all the warning labels on here. You don't want anybody getting hurt, nor do I, so make sure if you do purchase this unit, you read the owner's manual. The pull starts right here. Like I said, it's pretty easy. Uh, this unit here you want to start once a month. If you don't start it for a long time, then really what you want to do is go ahead and drain the fuel, uh, get that out of there because the fuel gets bad. And then when you go to start it, uh, they do uh, ask that you put a little bit of oil through the spark plug hole. very solid unit. I think uh, pretty much any homeowner would definitely want to have one of these. It's uh, very reliable with a 16 horsepower engine. Uh, it's very strong. It has an 8.3 gallon tank which holds plenty of fuel. I do believe that's enough to last about eight hours if you're drawing maybe about 5,000 watts off of it. Uh, like I said, electric manual start. Uh, the electric starts pretty easy. If you keep the charge up on the battery but the manual start, there's no problems with it. Uh, I'm really happy with the unit. I would advise uh, purchasing a cover for it. Which I'll put this right here in front of the camera. And you'll see that they do make one specifically for this unit. And it fits like a glove, uh, so definitely worthwhile there. With this unit, it comes on a crate and it's boxed. Uh, the crate is nothing much to speak of. It's very thin wood, uh, so you can actually break it apart pretty easy if you want to use it for firewood out in a fire pit or just to dispose of, you can. You also get some accessories with it. You're going to have an oil, oil fill 
funnel here, some outlets that you can go ahead and purchase wire, wire up yourself. Here's the alligator clips, which I use to clip on to my leads that I put on the unit there and hook it to a charger. There's also a spark plug uh, socket right here. And inside this, this bag in here, you're going to find some, you know, ad additional tools there. You know, nothing major. Uh, just, you know, the fitting here for the spark plug socket. But I think you'll find it's, uh, it's a very good unit for the price. You know, just right around the $1,000 mark, a little bit more. You can pick it up with free shipping and freight on a 300-pound three, item is definitely not cheap. As one that ships a lot of goods, I can tell you that'll save you approximately $200, depending upon what region of the United States you're located at. I'm real happy with it. Uh, it's nice to have on hand, and this gets a thumbs up from me. So I'll go ahead and put a link to this in the description where I bought it at and I'll put some other specifications down there as well so you can take a look at. And if you have any questions, you know, by all means, go ahead and leave a comment. Uh, if this video helped you in making a purchase decision, you know, please go ahead and like it, whether you buy the unit or not. Uh, my goal is to put out information that's accurate and helpful to you.